सकता है This is a video showing a couple of uh, rosy minnows mating behavior. It's in our backyard pond. Their nest made out of rocks. The roof is in two parts. The part in front where uh, the activity is taking place. It's a flat bottom rock. And this bottom is coplanar with the rear rock bottom. In between, there's a gap. The gap was intentional to let additional light in to illuminate the den. You can see the tubercles on the male fathead and he has been exhibiting they have been exhibiting this behavior the same male same female for probably at least the past hour maybe two hours maybe more I don't have any record capability on the camera that is put in underwater, so I'm recording it on my iPhone. The image is a pretty good representation of what I see on the screen, although the colors are not as good on the iPhone as on the screen. Occasionally, a third female, or a second female, joins the group. But so far, third female has been run off, and the original female has resumed activity. The male shows a marked color difference from its nominal appearance. A very dark pigment on the sides, the head, and then the top. And um, some uh, patches or stripes of lighter color. And the tubercles are very well defined. Tubercles on the on his snout. That are used to clean and care for the eggs which are deposited on the ceiling of the nest den. My hope is to be able to see the deposited eggs on the ceiling of the den and observe the male protecting the eggs, cleaning them, filtering off, getting rid of the decaying or dead or diseased eggs, and actually watching the fry emerge from the eggs. This is in a backyard pond, so the conditions are difficult to control since there are dozen good size 
probably uh, four to eight inch or ten inch goldfish along with dozens of other minnows these are rosy minnows and 11 24 carat white cloud fish this nest is in the general population area of the pond and the pond is circulated by pumps which draw water into filters and also move water around the perimeter kind of in a counterclockwise fashion in a directed stream to keep the water in motion so that the particulates stay, sus stay suspended and picked up by the filter. There are clumps of algae in the pond and occasionally you'll see a loose clump pass through the field of view. Sometimes long strands of algae obscure the field of view and they have to be removed. There's also debris accumulate on the lens, which blurs the image, skews it slightly, and has to be rubbed off periodically. You can see passing in front of the camera some goldfish occasionally photobombing the scene. This is really interesting. I'm using a camera that is normally used as a fish finder, used by fishermen on boats, pointed at the baited hook with a wire going up to the cockpit of the boat and a screen, this screen, so that the angler can observe fish visiting the bait, baited hook, and actually watching the strike. It's well adapted to snooping on fish pond life, except for the lack of interface to a digital recording device. The camera is stationed all probably six inches or less from the average position of this male. Actually, this is the female. This is the female rubbing her head against the roof of the of the ceiling of the den, maybe examining the surface or preparing the surface for eggs. The eggs float, so when they are expelled from the female, they'll rise up to the ceiling if they're not swept away by this current, which doesn't appear to be that strong in this particular spot. That's why this spot was chosen. It's outside the main stream. Of water that is circulated around the pond by the pump. 
Oh, here comes the mail back. Uh, the distance between you know, the, the front of the rock, which is visible at the top of the screen, to the very back rock in the center bottom, uh, you can see the, the point where the rock is resting. That distance is probably about four, five inches, maybe six. They're resuming their activity. Right now it's 8.30 a.m. June 3rd, 2020. And I'll terminate this recording and pick it up later.